Today is the day. We're gonna understand music theory. No more confusion, it ends today. So step one is to understand that there are only 12 notes that we use to make music. This is kind of not true, but that's for later. Those 12 notes are represented by the first seven letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And those are the white keys. The black keys are a sharp, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp again. Sharp means whatever note that you're on, you move right by one note. So if this is A, then this is A sharp. If this is G, then this is G sharp. So that's moving right by one step, sharp. Moving left by one note is called a flat step. If you start on A, then this is A flat. If you start on G, then this is G flat. Again, if you start on whatever note, let's say a D, and you move right by one semitone, that's a D sharp. If you start on D and you move left by one semitone, that note is called a D flat. And yes, this means that the black keys have two names. A sharp is the same note as B flat. D sharp is the same note as E flat. This one right there. Remember, sharp means that you move right by one semitone to a higher note, and flat means that you move down by one semitone to a lower note. Step two is to understand that you can organize these notes into groups known as scales, keys, also known as modes. You only really need to know two of them, major and minor, but there are five more, making the total seven. Minor and major scales are organized by degrees, like so. The one, which is the most important note known as the root. The second degree. The third degree. The fourth degree. The fifth. The sixth. The seventh. And then the one again. The scale that you're in is relative to the key, also known as the root that it is based on. We'll elaborate later. Step three is understanding how to make a major and minor scale mode. We'll start with C major. We already established in step one that a one note movement, whether it's to the left or to the right, is known as a semitone. Two semitones back to back is known as a whole step. C is the one. Then you move two semitones. Then from the two, in this case D, we make another whole step, half, half, which makes it a whole, so that's a whole, also known as two semitones, you land on E, the third, and then one semitone, you land on the fourth, then two semitones, you land on the fifth, then two semitones, you land on the sixth, then one semitone, and you land on the seventh, which is B. Major scales then go like this. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That is the sequence that you must use to achieve the major scale. Since we already established in step three that modes or scales are relative, then we could also apply these steps to every single major key on the keyboard and get the exact same results. If you start on F, apply whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and you get the F major scale. 
F is the 1, G is the 2, A is the 3, B flat is the 4, C is the 5, D is the 6, and E is the 7. And then back to the 1. F. Just follow the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half step sequence and you'll get a major scale wherever you want on the keyboard. If you apply it to B, you'll get a B major scale. To G, you'll get a G major scale. The second scale that you absolutely need to know about is the minor scale. It's the same concept with minor differences. Steps for the minor scale are whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. C is the one, D is the two, and here's where the differences start. The three is E flat as opposed to a regular E, right? Instead of it being right here, it's here. The four is an F, the five is a G, the six is an A flat, and finally the B flat is the seven, and then back to the one. Step four, let's look a little bit more into the scale degrees. In step three, I mentioned the one, the two, the three, and so on. These are most specifically known as scale degrees. The two will always be two semitones away from the one, right here. The three is always two semitones away from the two. The four is always one semitone away from the three. The five is always two semitones away from the four. The six is always two semitones away from the five. The seven is always two semitones away from the six. And the one is always one semitone away from the seven. Keep in mind that these numbers are specific to the major scale. The relationship from the one to the two is called a second. In this case, we are applying whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. One to the three is called the third step. One to the four is called the fourth step, fifth step, sixth step, seventh step, and then this one is called an octave, which brings me to chords. Now that we've established what the different steps are called, one, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh, and then an octave, now we can start understanding what chords are. When you strike different notes at the same time, you get chords. Using the previous examples, hitting the root, in this case C, then four semitones up to the third, and then three semitones to the fifth gives you a major chord. Technically called a major triad, but saying major chord is just fine. Let's try it again with G. You hit G, then four semitones to B, then three semitones to D, and you get a major triad. Okay, G is the one, the root, and then four half steps up to the B, the third degree, and then another three half steps to a D, which is the fifth, and you have a major triad. It's called a triad because it has three notes. One, the third, and the fifth which make up three notes. These steps will give you a major chord. You can tell it's a major chord by their bright characteristics.
making a minor chord is equally as simple. All you have to do is take the third, which is typically the middle note, and you flatten it one semitone. Remember what that means? One semitone to the left is called a flat note. Hey guys, one thing that I forgot to mention is that this one, three, five rule only applies to something known as a root triad. We'll explore it further in another video. But for now, take a look at this chart and the link in the description so that you can see all of the chords that this rule applies to. In this case, all you have to do is take the middle note and flatten it by one semitone, the middle note. So here's a G, and here's a G minor. All I did was, like we said before, a G major is G, B, and a D. And then the B, you flatten it by one note. You hit G. And then instead of doing four half steps, you actually only do three half steps. And now you land on a B flat. And then four half steps to the fifth. One, two, three, four, which is D. And you have a G minor. Right, here's a G major. And here's a G minor. Here's a D major. And here's a D minor. Here's an F sharp major. Here's an F sharp minor. There are a few exceptions known as inversions, but that's for a different lesson. And boom, there you go. The five first elements of music theory that you need to know. There are way more things out there that would take two lifetimes to know it all. But for now, that's all we need to know. And it's enough to make a beautiful, amazing career. All you really need to know is this and a few more things and you're just fine forever. I hope you tune in for the next episode, which is going to expand on a lot of the ideas that we introduced today. So please subscribe, like, comment, share. I love you. Ciao, ciao.